Hey everyone, this is Brainwaves and today I'm going to talk about my tips and guidelines for mixing and mastering. So let's jump into Ableton and get started. Alright, so to explain a little bit on the way that I mix and master my stuff, I thought it was useful to check my template. I went into my template on my uh, last video, but I'll just go through it again because I just made some minor changes to actually uh, make my mixing uh, process easier. Basically in my template there is three main groups, all the drums, all the synths and all the fills. Then I have a group for guide tracks in here, a resampler and I have my pre-master. All of these three channels if you notice they are going through the pre-master first and the pre-master then goes to the master so I do this basically because I want to keep my master as clean as possible so some effects I may put on the pre-master and not on the master um, so let me just break it down a little bit um, for every channel MIDI and audio channel I have a utility set at minus 10 and an EQ. I have actually a little note on the master with some like guidelines for the volumes. For me I found that what works is having like the kick around minus 4 dB, the snares around minus 6 dB and the sub bass around minus 12 dB and having the master near 0 dB so most of the time I will go above 0 um, by like 2 or 3 dB and that doesn't matter as much but I try to stay near 0 um, and so if you check my kick channel instead of having the utility at minus 10 it is on minus 4 same with, same with the snare on minus 6 and uh, the sub web base is minus 10 in here but also minus 2 in the patch operator patch for the sub base so that would be minus 12 I usually also check my subways with the span. I will talk about about that later in the video. Um, but having like these guidelines have helped me a lot because it kind of gives me a path to go through. Um, because what I do when I mix is having these two elements, the kick and the snare, as the loudest parts of the mix. And then I start like uh, setting the volume for everything else to go below the levels of it, the kick and the snare. Sometimes in some in some tracks it may be the same level, the kick and the snare, or even in some songs I have the snare sounding a bit louder than the kick. Um, but the main idea is having these two elements as the loudest parts of your track and then mixing um, with that in mind. So I'm gonna open a project that is a work in progress uh, that I think it's gonna be a good example of how I mix and the things that I may put on the pre on the pre master and on the master and all of that. All right, so this is the project. Um, it's just like basically the build up and drop idea by now. Multiverse. Alright, so let's go through it. So if you check the main kick 
is set at minus 4 dB as I said. Snares are hitting at minus 5. So as I said, it's not like set in stone. The guidelines that I mentioned earlier is just like a good guide. Um, uh, then some top end precaution. Then all the scents in here. I do my side chain manually, so this is my side chain. It's pretty important to get like a good accurate side chain. Besides that I have like this uh, rack that I got from my homie Chuck. It's just like a river throw thing. And this is, I don't know where I got this from, but this is like a chain to distort a little bit of my sense it has like a soft clip saturator and no TT and it's split into my low end and uh, the rest so this one stops at 150 Hertz and this one starts at the, uh, 150 Hertz and as you can see I leave the low end with no processing on purpose because I want the sub to be pretty much a sine wave with some distortion so it gives it like a little bit of a more aggressive sound and um, yeah if you check the sobbing here it's at minus 12 almost minus 13 and uh, what I was saying about span is Span is a really useful tool to measure the sub and to measure everything in the song really. So the way that I check my mix on Span is I turn on my mastering chain with a shortcut that I have. Normally my rule of thumb for the sub bass is to have it like in between minus 30 and minus 24 uh, and actually minus 24 is like the ceiling that I have for my tracks when it comes to span. I'm gonna share the settings that I have on span because it may look different for you but I have the average time at a, a thousand and the block size at 4096 so as I said I want my sub base to be in between 30 minus 30 and minus 24 in this case is hitting at around minus 27 which is perfect for me uh, and for this type of music obviously also the relationship in between the sub bass and the sub overtones it's really important because if you have a lot it will sound muddy if your this low mid area is too weak it will sound empty or with not much force uh, so having like a good balance it is important um, I would say if you have the sub at minus 27 or 28 as I have in here, try to have the sub overtones at minus 5 to minus 10 dB lower than the sub. That level it's appropriate for this type of music. The way that I came to this conclusion is to, well, first, uh, his videos uh, helped me a lot, and also my structures at the Fire Society they really helped me to get like a better mix the fire society is a music online music school that i've been a student of for more than a year by now and they have a ton of feedback live streams every day 
with great instructors and uh, workshops weekly with a lot of great artists. I highly recommend you to check the Fire Society. There is a link in the description in which you have a 10 day free trial. So I encourage you to take a look on it. You may like it. They, they have really helped me. Some things that I may put on the Premaster is with the utility that I have in here. You can see that it's named build up and that's because I normally on my build ups I do like this type of automation because my build ups tend to get like really loud in comparison to my drop and obviously that's not a good idea. You want the drop to be the loudest part and to have like the most impact on your song. So I normally do uh, an automation something like this just to control how loud the build up gets and also I may put like a auto filter in here and do something like this This also adds more tension and since you're cutting frequencies you are also lowering the volume a little bit and the way that I measure this, the way that I measure the loudness in overall is with this plugin. This is a free plugin. I have it set to color the threshold at minus 6 which means that everything above minus six will be in red. That's because I want my tracks to be above that level on the drop. So if you check this out, I have my master on by the way. This is, that, this is why I like to have like a shortcut to go back and forth in between my uh, mix and my master because that way I can check the loudness and uh, I can get a good sense of how could they sound when it's done and also when your master is on you can hear flaws on your mix and fix them so as I was saying to measure the loudness I will have my master on and then I will be checking in this plugin multiverse so as you saw at the end of the build up he was getting a bit loud but it, it didn't went louder than the drop so that's what i wanted probably if i mute this it may go louder than the drop so let's check it out multiverse so yep without the without the automations it went to minus three and the drop is hitting at around minus 4.5 or something so that was louder than the drop even if it's just uh you know temporary and it's just like a little part of the build up i still don't want that to happen so this that that is something that i can fix on the premaster really easily now to talk about the master chain as you can see it's really simple this is just two glue compressors and i put two compressors instead of just one because i've noticed that balancing like the load like the workload on the compressors uh, gives a better result than only having one compressor doing the whole work and also like you can see the that they have different parameters in here but basically the first compressor has a threshold of minus 15 and it's increasing the volume by 5 dB 
in the second compressor uh, the threshold is set at zero which means that there is basically no compression it's more like just a gain knob but it has like the soft clip on and they actually both have the, the soft clipping so that way I can make sure that they don't go above zero and actually the glue compressor in Ableton has like a integrated headroom at, of minus 0.5 so I have this utility to compensate for that uh, so if you if I take it off you can you will see that multiverse instead of this hitting on zero it will hit on minus 0.5 multiverse so to fix that I have the 0.5 in the utility and that way it hits at zero every time multiverse something else that I check with span is like the stereo image of the song so I have this routing setting here name mid-side stereo and then I have the yellow spectrum set on the sides so this spectrum is the mid all uh, everything in the middle or everything in mono and this is the side information or the stereo information so an issue that I am seeing in here is that there is a stereo information in the low end and uh, that's not ideal so to avoid that what I do is I use Q3 for this and so I do a low cut on the sides and I put it at around 150 and with this kind of slope and you can see that now I don't have stereo information below but now my master is clipping so what I do to fix that is just put a limiter at the end of the chain put the ceiling at zero and now I have like the stereo issue fixed and it's not uh, redlining anymore it's not clipping I know that many people don't care if it clips at the end of the master chain I I just try to keep it safe and uh, soft clip everything. So that's it for this one. If you found this helpful, please leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time.